Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope that you are doing so very well. Today I'm here to talk to you about all the books I read in the first month of the year, January, and also talk about some other stuff. I feel like my wrap-ups are like a clearinghouse where I'm like, here's a lot of stuff, also all the books I read. First up, I want to talk about a cool pre-order perk that you can get whenever you pre-order the third book in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. A Conjuring of Light is coming out later this month, and if you pre-order A Conjuring of Light, you get this cool book hugger. Or it can be a poster, whatever you want it to be. They also sent me the paperback copies of A Darker Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadows, both by V.E. Schwab. I've read A Darker Shade of Magic, really liked it. I haven't gotten to A Gathering of Shadows yet. I'll leave the link to pre-order down below. Get yourself a cool book hugger and or poster. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The second thing I want to talk to you about is Kindness Challenge for the year of 2017. In my December wrap-up, I was like, I don't know what Kindness Challenge is going to look like. I don't know what this year is going to be like. And then I came up with a brilliant idea. Idea. As most of you know, I work for a nonprofit called I Pour Life. I really love it. I love everything about it. We're doing good work, so I want to tell people about it. So I thought for 2017, we could all come together and raise money for one of I Pour Life's efforts. But I am going to let you guys pick which one you want to do. The two choices I have for you are local and global, specifically Ethiopia. Locally, we work with marginalized and at-risk youth, especially youth aging out of the foster system, and essentially we life coach them. Mentor isn't really the word that's used because the coach is really someone who isn't afraid to tell people like it is. They'll also tell people, you know, you need to do better. I expect more from you. And really it's providing a family for these kids who many of them haven't had a solid family unit. Everybody who's part of our program is part of our family. They stop in the office all the time. It's so much fun having them around. Some really awesome people that I am so thankful that I've met that I know because they were a part of Life Strengths, the local program name. Hey. Globally, we have a lot of programs, but the one I picked out of our global programs is our global women's economic economic empowerment program. We work in a community called Koro. These are the people who have been shunned by society because they have leprosy or HIV. Most of their families have abandoned them and told them, you're cursed, I don't want anything to do with you. But these women are so awesome and so incredible and they deserve a better future than their family abandoning them. So again, we are their new family. What up? Essentially, we find out what these women are good at, we find out what they like to do, and we help them create a business around that. They go through business classes and then we give them their startup capital and for a year we manage their savings account for them and really help them focus on saving their money for their future. The cool thing about picking either of these efforts is that I can tell you real stories of the impact that your donations are having. And with global efforts, I'm going to Ethiopia at the end of May. If we've raised enough to send a woman through the program, I'll probably be able to actually be like, this is the woman we sent through the program and this is her family. I can't guarantee that, but I possibly could like show you pictures and be like, this is the impact you're making. I hope you can see my passion about this, that I'm really passionate about this and this is a cool thing that I want to do. I don't really have a goal in mind, so if you guys have a goal idea, let me know down below of how much you think that we can raise in a year. And I will also leave a link to the Twitter poll down below for choosing which effort we are going to do, the local or the global. Once we pick an effort, I will make an actual announcement video and be like, this is what we're doing. But right now we're just choosing which one and then I will make an announcement video. And that's it for all my announcements and all my stuff. Now let's get into the books. First up is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is about a girl named Fanny. And when she is younger, she's sent to live with her more well-to-do family. And you see her growing up in that household. So this is pretty much the story of her life. And it's just them living. That's pretty much it. It's them living. That was a really great explanation. I know you can Google it if you want a better one. I can safely say this is my least favorite Jane Austen book of them all. There's so many things I didn't like about this book. All the characters were the worst. They were all terrible. The ending romantically was not even satisfying at all. The plot was exciting at times but boring at others. It was okay. Okay. And the one thing that I really, really did love is that Fanny is a very moral person. She sticks to her guns. At the beginning of the book, she's afraid to speak up, but then later in the book, some things happen and she sticks to her guns and she's like, no, I am not going to do that. I am not going to be that person. I'm going to be my own person. No matter what you say, no matter what you try to do, I am going to stick to my guns. And she says no, even when it doesn't look good on her. And she is awesome for that. But besides that, everything was the worst. It's also so long. Like, it's so, so long. Uh, yeah. I think I gave it a 2.5 on Goodreads, but I'm gonna move it down to a 2 right now, because I do not like this book. It has some redeeming qualities. The plot is not the worst, whereas in some other books, like, nothing happens. There are actually, like, some pretty tense moments, which makes for some exciting storytelling, and I really loved Fanny as a character, especially how she developed over time and over age, but besides that, everything is the worst. So, 2 out of 5 stars for this one. Next up is The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. I read this 
for my book club book, which is really good because it's been sitting on my shelf for like a year and I hadn't gotten to it. This is about a couple that works at a lighthouse off the coast of Australia. They're very deserted there and one day a dead man and a baby wash up on shore. Isabel has been having a really tough time with not having children so she just takes this child in as her own and they go back to the mainland and they discover that there are people that their choice has affected and they have to deal with those consequences and with those feelings. This was overall a beautifully written story. It was so moving and so beautiful and so sad. At the same time, it was equally frustrating. Isabel is such a freaking frustrating character. So is Tom in a way. He is, like Fanny Price, a very moral person. He has strong convictions that he kind of disregards in his love for Isabel, and Isabel is just like the worst. I kind of felt bad for her, but I mostly didn't. I think the reason it was most frustrating was for me, the choice was clear, and Isabel was like, no, we're not gonna do that, and Tom just went along with it, and I was like, no. And then it led to worse stuff, and there was a lot of like, I wouldn't even qualify it as secondhand embarrassment, it was just like, ooh, feeling their pain, and you're like, ugh, ugh, the whole time. To quote my own Goodreads review, overall, beautifully written, heartbreaking, but extremely frustrating past the point of endearing. That is like this book summed up in a nutshell. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. And I read this for Diversathon because it is an own voices LGBTQ plus book. This is about a boy named Henry Denton who's dealing with the death of his boyfriend as well as continually getting abducted by aliens. The aliens tell him the day that the world is going to end and give him the choice to save the world or to let it burn. Henry's pretty sure that he wants to let the world burn. He's pretty over it. But then he meets a boy named Diego, and Diego tries to change his mind. This was a book that I started off very on the fence about. I don't really love super crass books where it's like boys being crass and being rude and stuff. I understand that it's accurate or whatever, but it doesn't mean that I have to enjoy it. And I was like, uh, please no, please stop, no. But around the halfway mark, it got so much better. There was still those elements of just crassness, but it was lost in a beautiful story story and there was a lot less of it as the book went on and I so appreciated that because I was so over it. It was such a beautiful as well as sad story about loss and about grief and about letting people in again and about friendship and it was just so good. The main character is gay and one of the side characters is pansexual I believe. It covered a lot of different subjects, a lot of dark subjects, a lot of difficult things. The message was beautiful, the story was beautiful, the beginning was really rough but the ending made everything worth it. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is a book whose author's names I am hardcore going to butcher. I tried looking them up. I still have problems with them, so I'm just warning you in advance. It's Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Charapotra and Danielle Clayton. I tried my best. I really tried. This is a book about girls at a ballet school, and with that is a lot of drama, a lot of intrigue, a lot of mystery, a lot of pettiness, a lot of pranks, and just everything that goes into ballet, or that I think goes into ballet, because of this book. It's a very cutthroat environment and it's just following them through the course of a school year. I read this also for a diverse fun. This features a really wide cast of characters. It's told from three different perspectives of three different ballerinas. One girl is the new ballerina, the one who everyone is kind of like, what's going on with you? And she's black and has a heart condition. One of the other main characters is half Korean and the other one is blonde hair, blue eye. It was really, really interesting seeing all these different girls' perspectives of the story and seeing things through different eyes. I really enjoyed seeing all the different viewpoints. I also loved the intrigue and the mystery of it and trying to figure things out. But on the other hand, there was a lot of petty girl drama, which all y'all know I don't love. Sometimes I could deal with it, sometimes I was like, can you not? It was like just when things were getting really terrible and really bad and you're like, this can't get worse, it did. It got a lot worse. I'll probably still read the next book, let's be real, because I want to know what happens. And also this cast of characters is worth commending and worth like talking about because they are so awesome, but I know the drama is just gonna get amped up and I'm gonna just have to mentally prepare myself for that. If you like a lot of drama and a diverse cast of characters, you'll like this book. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is When We Collided by Emery Lord. This is about a girl named Vivi and a boy named Jonah. Vivi moves to town after dealing with some stuff in her hometown, and Jonah is from this small town and he's still dealing with the death of his father and helping his family out and doing the best he can to just survive. The two meet, click, hit it off, and it's just about their summer romance, but with a lot deeper things involved in that. This book talks about and deals with bipolar disorder as well as depression, and especially with bipolar 
bipolar disorder. I've never seen that actually played out in a book like it was in this, so it was really interesting to see that perspective because I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about bipolar disorder. I don't know how it affects people. I don't know the differences between different bipolar disorders and this explained a lot of them and it was really insightful. Both of the characters in this book are dealing with some hard, hard truths and they both deal with and go through so much in this book and learn so much and I really loved them together. Just a tad bit insta lovey, but not enough for me to hate it. I really loved these characters, especially Jonah. Too good for this world, too pure. He is a cinnamon roll. I love him so much. He cooks. I was hungry a lot of times reading this book because there was so much talk about cooking. It's fine. But overall, this is a really beautiful story. I really, really loved it. I'm so glad that I read it. I gave this a four out of five stars. And last but not least, I have Unashamed by Lecrae. I buddy read this with Christina because she's the best. I will link her down below. You should go check out her channel she is so great. This book was so good. This is the testimony of the rapper Lecrae. He's also a Christian and this book was really just about his life and it was so freaking good. There were so many times that I was just so moved and so impacted and it's just it's so good. I would highly recommend this to literally everyone and also you should just listen to his music. He actually just released a song called Blessings with Ty Dollar Sign. You should go check it out. I don't know what else to say about this book but just his past and all the things that he went through and the things that he dealt with that have really led to impacting his music and just how he changes and matures as a Christian and talks about that in this book were so good. I'm sorry to all of you that followed me on Goodreads because I was like constantly updating my Goodreads feed with quotes from this book. Like there would be like three quotes on a page and I was like, well, gotta do it all. I loved this book so much and I am so glad that I read it. I gave this a five out of five stars. And that is it. That is all six of the books that I read in January. Let me know down below what your favorite book that you read is. And also let me know down below if you have any questions about any of the books or about the fundraiser we're going to do for kindness challenge. If you like this video go ahead and like it and click subscribe if you want to see my face when it occasionally pops up when I post a video not regularly trying to be better at that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye! Take a roll. Can you not? Back at it again. Oh, look at the highlight.